I was born and raised as a Muslim. Both my parents were Muslim, grandparents, so far back that my mother's maiden name can be traced back to the Prophet Muhammad's family tree. By the age of six, I had memorized so many surahs of the Quran that my parents would call me to recite them in front of their friends. They seemed so proud, and their friends would cheer in amazement. In elementary school, my mother made all my teachers aware of the fact she didn't want me partnered up with any male students. She warned me not to play with boys at school, and I was always aware of the fact I was to uphold the honor of my family. My first marriage proposal would be at the age of 13. By 17, I had graduated high school, and before I could start university, I was married. After all, that was my destiny. I loved Islam very much. I couldn't imagine how anyone in their right mind could ever doubt it, let alone doubt the existence of Allah. I couldn't fathom the idea. But as a child, I remember asking, does Allah know about the dinosaurs? Does Allah only speak Arabic? Did Allah make bad things too? And my biggest question was, of course, where did Allah come from? Who created him? My mother's eyes would widen in shock. She would shake her head and say, you know, stop these silly questions, haram. She would recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. There was no questioning Allah or the Quran. If the Quran said it, then it was so. No other explanation could measure up, and if science had proven the Qur'an wrong, then in time science would realize its mistakes. Or as I learned in later years, translations would be found to meet scientific evidence to some degree. I remember being asked by a relative at a family gathering who I loved most. I knew the answer they wanted to hear. I knew the first love of every Muslim is Allah before themselves, their child, their mother, their father, anything or anyone that may exist in this life. And how I was praised when I said, I love Allah the most. After all, everything good in my life was from Him and everything that went wrong was Him telling me to pray more and do better. Islam was the truth. Being a Muslim was all I knew and Islam is how I defined myself. It wasn't just a religion, it was a way of life, the only way of life. There wasn't one defining moment that made me decide to look in deeper into the religion because I had already learned to turn to the Qur'an or a scholar for every question I had. And of course, Islam had all the answers. From how to dress, eat, walk, talk, who to marry, and how to make out one's will. Consequently, robbing its followers from the phenomenon of seeing this world through their own eyes and not through the words of an old book. A lesson that would take me some time to learn. Nevertheless, I felt the need to learn more so that if I was confronted by any questions, I could confidently argue the case that Islam was the one true path. I spent all my time reading as much as I could going to Islamic conventions, digging up interpretation after interpretation. No matter what was written, I always found a way to justify it to myself. I had to. There could be no other choice. It wouldn't be long to see exactly what I was doing. I was molding the Quran into something it wasn't. My childish questions would perk their evil heads up again, but this time, they weren't so childish. It was like walking on broken glass. Every single step I took was painful. But if I was ever to reach smooth ground, I would have to keep going. I believed in equal rights for everyone, everywhere. In the right to enter or leave a religion as one wished, I believed in secularism. And I still marvel at how small and insignificant we are compared to the rest of the universe and how we've managed to see 47 billion light years into it. How did I miss this in school? Where was I? What was I thinking? 47 billion light years into space or that the world is over four and a half billion years old. Yet Allah only decided to reveal his true intention for his creation 1400 years ago. 4.5 billion years. That's 4.5 billion years of life and death on earth. 
four billion four hundred and ninety nine million nine hundred and ninety eight thousand six hundred years without Allah's divine revelation submitting my life to Allah seems so silly now and as painful as it was my heart still breaks thinking of my family living in fear or that they feel guilty every time they miss a prayer it breaks my heart to think they let one moment of this life pass them by somehow Allah will make it up to them in the afterlife as painful as it was losing my religion it's spectacular how sweeter life became I also began letting go of some stereotypes against non-Muslims, any conspiracy theories that Muslims were under attack by the rest of the world or that Islam was somehow too powerful, too great to be criticized. I did not become atheist because I was rebellious against Islam. I rebelled against atheism to stay Muslim until I couldn't anymore. I couldn't ignore any longer the unfair treatment of women under Islamic law or how the veil or the hijab implied that men were not required to re control themselves. How could I still believe in Adam and Eve or in magic, what some would call miracles, or that fear makes us any more righteous? How could I still say Allahu Akbar and be honest with myself? Allahu Akbar. God is not good. Allah is not good. His only retribution is that he does not exist. I'd like to end this video with a poem written by Ali Asfahani, an Iranian poet living in Canada, written in 2003 after the Bam earthquake. It's titled, Keep on Saying My God is Kind. As the ceilings tumbled and dust filled the eyes and mouths, struts and beams landed on heads and necks and hands and legs, ready to stir, stop still under heaps of soil. As moans and shrieks ascended the sky, we were not there to see all this suffering and speak not a word of it, but God, after all, was there. Did he not see babies sucking on their mother's breasts? Did he not see shy new brides climbing into their nuptial beds? Did he not see flocks of faithful and nocturnal prayers? Did he not see feverish bodies dreaming of good health? Did he not see? Did he not? Did he? Did he not know that no mother would be left to put balm on the wounds of thousands of bleeding children? Did he not know that the surviving mothers and fathers, having lost their children, would have no desire for life? Did he not know that those who were away from their home would have no kinsmen left to cry on their shoulder? Did he not know? Did he not? Would you keep on saying, my God is kind? Would you, for the sake of your kind God, define kindness for me?